Hey folks and welcome back to the channel. Let's ask and answer the five commonest questions about stomas. First one, not surprisingly, is what is a stoma? So a stoma quite literally in Latin means mouth and that can be any opening into a illuminated organ. But when people talk about stomas in surgical language, in the vast majority of cases, they're talking about bowel stomas. And that's defined as a surgically created communication between the bowel and the skin. Now, there are different types, but the commonest ones are ileostomy, which is between small bowel and the skin, and a colostomy, which is between a large bowel and the skin. And I'll come to the major differences between the two later on in this video. But of course, there are, there are other types of stomas. So for example, a urostomy is a conduit for urine. So this would be in a situation where the patient has had major bladder surgery. They've had potentially their whole bladder out. And so the ureter is brought out to the skin through a, something called an ileal conduit. You can have a gastrostomy, so a, an opening or a mouth into the stomach. So this would be in a situation where, for example, a patient uh, can't swallow for a variety of reasons. They may have had um, major head and neck surgery or they may have had a stroke or a neurological disease and they can't swallow. And so all of that is bypassed through a something called a PEG, so percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy, which is a semi-permanent opening into the stomach. Or uh, something most people have heard of as a tracheostomy, which is essentially an opening into the trachea to, again, allow the patient to breathe, bypassing the upper airway. Next up, what are end and loop stomas? So an end stoma, as the name suggests, uh, essentially is just an end of a piece of bowel that is brought to the skin and fashioned into a stoma. Whereas a loop is essentially a loop of bowel which is not cut in half. In other words, the continuity of the bowel is not disrupted. Essentially, a hole is created with one end being the proximal end and the other one being the distal end, and that's brought to the skin. So an example of a, an end stoma would be in this, in this picture, for example, where the patient has had a loop of bowel removed, for example, a, a sigmoid colon, and I'll give you an example of this later on in this video, and the distal descending colon is brought out into the skin and fashioned into an end stoma. Whereas a loop stoma, in this case in the transverse colon, is not the whole thing is not divided and essentially brought to the skin. One bit is the productive, the green bit in this case, the productive part of the bowel, and this bit is just allowed to rest and not to do anything because nothing is going past it. All the contents are coming out into a bag. The other important uh, differentiator in stomas is the difference between a permanent and a temporary stoma. And you may hear these words bandied about. So as the name suggests, a temporary stoma is usually reversed when the dust settles, whereas a permanent stoma, everything else beyond that stoma is completely taken out of action. For example, major uh, cancer surgery. Next up, what does defunctioning mean in the context of stomas? So defunctioning, essentially, as the name suggests, you take it out of action. So essentially to take the bowel further downstream or further distal from a, a stoma out of action for a period of time, usually as a temporary measure. The definition I really like is to allow it to rest, allow the bowel to rest and to recuperate from whatever you've done. An example would be, again, this picture that we saw earlier. So this is a loop stoma in the transverse colon. And this section, the green bit, is active and productive. So all the contents, peristalsing and all the contents are going into a bag. Anything distal to that, this blue section, is defunctioned and is allowed to rest. And, and I'll go through an example of that in a moment. Now, why would you use a defunctioning uh, stoma? The most common reason is to allow something further downstream to heal. So for example, if you've taken out I don't know, the sigmoid colon, for example, and you anastomose the two ends, uh, what you do is you obviously don't want kind of fecal matter to go past that all the time because it's full of bacteria. There is obviously a risk of infection. There's a risk of dehiscence. There's a risk of sepsis. Another common use of a defunctioning stoma would be to relieve obstruction further downstream. So this would be in the case of something like a you know very large tumor that is potentially inoperable 
and to avoid you know, a problem for the patient, you defunction the loop of bowel further upstream. Another example would be for palliative reasons. Next up, what's the difference between a colostomy and an ileostomy? Now, this is a very commonly asked and encountered question, and the best way to think about this is in three ways. One is to do with sight, one is to do with spout, and the other one is to do with stuff. And by stuff, I mean sort of content of a bag. So a site of a colostomy is usually on the left, on the left iliac fossa, left side of the abdomen, whereas an ileostomy is usually on the right, on the right iliac fossa and right of the abdomen. Here's an example of an ileostomy on the patient's right and a colostomy on the patient's left. The next major difference is to do with the spout. And what that means is that in the case of an ileostomy, usually they are spouted. In other words, they are not flush with the skin. They are proud of the skin. And the reason for that is to do with the third major difference, which is stuff, which is the content of the bag. And so in the case of an ileostomy, the content of the bag is very noxious, is very toxic to the skin because it's further upstream in the alimentary canal. It's close to the stomach. You've got hydrochloric acid. You've got pancreatic enzymes these are very corrosive to the skin so what you don't want is for that to be in contact with the skin all the time so the ileostomy is usually spouted so that it acts as a tap for the contents to just dribble into the bag whereas in the in the case of a colostomy it's more flush with the skin and the contents although not very pleasant they are sort of semi-formed semi-solid fecal matter and again it's not pleasant but it's not as noxious and as corrosive as the contents of a bag for a, an ileostomy. Next up, what is a good example of stomas in clinical practice? Now, there are many different kinds of stomas that we could talk about, but one very good way of illustrating this is to do with this procedure called Hartman's. And Hartman's procedure is usually removal of the sigmoid colon, either as a result of a tumor or as a result of a perforated diverticulum from diverticulitis. This is a very common presentation in surgical practice. And as you can see here, this is the sigmoid colon with a tumor or a perforation within it. Now, just to recap our anatomy, this is the appendix, this is the terminal ileum, this is the cecum, and it goes up, ascending colon, hepatic flexure, transverse colon, splenic flexure, descending colon, then you've got the sigmoid colon, which in this case is involved, and then you've got the rectum. And here, what they do is they remove the sigmoid colon together with its blood supply and the lymphatic drainage. But what you don't want to do is anastomose the stumps together because obviously there's contamination. So what people do in this procedure called Hartman's, they bring out that end of the descending colon in a temporary end colostomy uh, and oversew the stump of the rectum and leave it in the pelvis and just allow the dust to settle for a few weeks, wait for the infection to settle, wait for the patient to stabilize potentially, wait for people to know the pathology and so on. And then at a later date, when the dust has settled, they come back and re the distal end of the descending colon back to the rectum, thereby sort of re-establishing the continuity of the bowel, so reversing the colostomy. So this is a very good example uh, of a very common colorectal operation to illustrate when a stoma is very useful. And in this case, it would be a colostomy in the left iliac fossa, flush with the skin, and it's an example of a temporary end colostomy. Hope you found that useful, folks. If you did, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. The button is just down there somewhere. And thank you for watching to the very end, and I'll see you in the next one.